This conference will now be recorded. Hi everyone, welcome to AWS Data Engineer Training Program. And today we'll be starting with PySpark. As the name indicates, this is Spark with Python. Spark is the data processing technology and that can be implemented using different programming languages. But Python is the very common nowadays and very uh, famous nowadays. That's why commonly we call it as PySpark. So let's start with the agenda. So the agenda for today's class is overview of Spark. We'll talk about how to install Spark on our Cloud9. We'll configure PySpark cell. Read data from local file. Read data from S3 file. Select in data frame. Filter in data frame. Adding and dropping columns in a data frame. So these are the things which we will be exploring practically in today's class. Okay. So let's go to our cloud nine and we'll start with that. So first of all, I need to log in. And I will be opening my <coughs> cloud nine instance. Okay. I'll let it open. It will take a few minutes. In the meantime, we'll talk about what Spark is. So Spark is a distributed data processing technology. Nowadays, from last few years, every technology is almost like distributed in nature. The reason being is we have large amount of data and processing that large amount of data on a single system is like error prone and time consuming. But on the other hand, if you can distribute that among multiple system, the same data can be processed in less amount of time. Because now the load is distributed among multiple machine and multiple machine will be parallelly processing your data, hence taking lesser time. So there are few uh, features of Spark. First feature is in memory computation. I'm not sure whether you are aware about the technology Hadoop or not. But Hadoop was a data processing technology used like earlier and there was a limitation with Hadoop that Hadoop is like hard disk based processing. That means any intermediate processing it will write into hard disk and then it will read from hard disk which is time consuming process. So in order to overcome that limitation Spark was introduced. And Spark has a feature that it will do in memory computation. That means it will try to manipulate your data. It will try to analyze your data as much as possible within RAM, within memory. That's why it is quite fast. But that still depends upon your memory size because if your data size is beyond your memory size, in that case, the excess data needs to be written into the hard disk. But still, it will try to maintain as much as possible within memory and that will make the Spark faster than Hadoop. Okay. Another feature is fault tolerant. Because we are dealing with multiple system, because we are processing the data parallelly on multiple system, that means in case any system is down by any means, in that case, Spark is smart enough that it will assign that task to some other system. Ultimately, as a user, it's not your headache, it's not your concern to find the another system and then who will do that data processing. That is not your concern. It will be automatically taken care by Spark. And as far as programming language is concerned, you can write your Spark job in Java, in R, in Scala and last but not the least is Python. So Python is more common nowadays. You can write the Spark program in Python. And it supports SQL type syntax. That means, although it's a programming language, but still you don't have to uh, put a lot of efforts to learn that because you can even use SQL type syntax. That means if you want to use select star from table and order by group by joining of two tables, 
each and everything you can do. And the good part is you are not dealing with database. When you are dealing with database and you are using a SQL query is, is not a big deal that everyone uh, we do that right. But if you are dealing with text file, your file is located, uh, your file is like CSV file, comma separated values. And you want to analyze those files, but you want to analyze like table. So Spark will help you to analyze your text file and you can use SQL type syntax that we will explore once we will do the hands on. And it is integrated with Hadoop which is used to process the data parallelly on multiple machines. That's what I was explaining. So Hadoop is a technology where the data is splitted and stored on multiple system so that multiple system can participate in the storage. So this is basic overview of Spark and once we will do practically it will be more clear to you. So anyone is having any doubt on the overview slide you can ask me. Otherwise we'll be going back to cloud 9 and we'll be starting with Spark. <clears throat> okay. So first of all let me create a folder we will go to file and new do not have folder right click new folder I would give the name as spark okay. now we will go into spark and first of all we need to download spark so you can go to Google and type download spark. You can go to this website and you can see this one spark 3.4.1 bin hadoop 3.tzz. This should be good. So how to download this, you can right click on this and copy the link, copy link address, okay. Because basically if I will click on this one, this will be downloaded on my local. And then I have to upload that into the cloud line. You can also do that. That's also easy. Otherwise, copy the link, go back to cloud line and here do w get. w get means web get. Ultimately, it's a way to download something from internet using command line so w get space you can paste the link whichever you copied and enter okay. so this will be downloaded on your cloud line so it's not yet completed it will take some time mm, but it's not displaying any any speed or any time let me ch check Is it downloaded? Okay. Let me check the space. Du hyphen sh. 32k. I still doubt. It should not be 32k. Something is wrong. Let me check on the slide. W get and this one. Command is correct only. And it should go like this. 100% it should show and then the size, then the speed, right? But in our case, it did not do like that. Let me try again. W get HTTP Okay, let's do one thing. Let's try to download on our local. 
okay okay i understood now so once you click on that that is that was not the actual download link once you click on that link it will take you to here and then this is the actual link so that's why it was not downloading the full file it, copy this control c this is the actual link come back to cloud 9 remove that whatever is downloaded okay. and we'll do again w get and this link Connecting to deal this one is done. Oh, it's it this time it's downloading. Okay, it's done. You can see here 83.0 milli uh, MB per second and four second it took to download. And the total size of your file is 83 MB. That's good because this is a big file, not like KB. Let me quickly check. Yes. This is the file. Now this is a zipped file as you can see in a TZZ format. TZZ stands for tar, tar Z. Okay. So you need to untar it. There's a command tar then hyphen <coughs> XVF. Okay. There's a different meaning of XVF. X for extract, V for verbose and I think F for file. And then provide your tar.z file name and enter. So it will extract, it will display all the file names, whatever it is extracting, as you can see currently on the screen. Okay, so let it extract completely. Yeah, I think that is done. So if I will check, you will find there is a tar.bz file that's a compressed file, and there is a folder. Okay, so if you go to go inside the folder. is a bin right go into bin bin for binary and here you will find i think uh, spark do we have spark here uh, pi spark is there right so if i will do dot slash pi spark Okay, good. So we are ready to execute our PySpark command. Let me quickly brief you like what exactly I did. So I went to Google. I find out the download link of the Spark. You can even download on your local and the, from the local, you can even upload into your cloud nine, upload local file. You can do that. That's one way. Another way is I simply did wget and then the link and it downloaded the, uh, this one zip file. And then with the help of one command, I extracted it. And then inside the Spark directory, you will find a bin directory. Bin directory contains binary files, which we can run. So inside the bin, there are a lot of, lot of files. But the file which we are looking for is PySpark. This one. And finally, you simply did dot slash PySpark. Dot slash means in the current directory. Dot means current directory. So in the current directory, there is a PySpark, which I want to run. And you can see that finally it has opened PySpark cell. You may be thinking, what is the PySpark cell? Earlier, whatever terminal was open, that was your Cloud9 terminal. That means it's a Linux terminal where you can execute your Linux commands. Like you can do PWD, date command and CD command and all those commands, right? But currently, whatever you can see is Spark cell. That means your basic Linux command will not work. If you type PWD, it will fail. You can see that PWD is not defined. And if you type date, it will say date is not defined. Because this is Spark cell and this will recognize only Spark commands. So what are Spark commands? How to use the spark commands those things we will be doing practically okay so i'm stopping here in case you are having any doubt till now you can ask me
okay so in the inside spark we have a folder and what i can do is i can create one more folder with the name data because i will copy some file here and then we'll be using those file for processing okay so what i will do is i will click on file and then upload local files i have some csv file on my local so we'll be using that okay Here are the files sample employee data dot data dot csv sample department data dot csv let's copy the both files we'll use these files for our spark practical so you can see that under data folder these two file has been copied okay and we'll be using those two files so seems like there is no doubt let me quickly check randomly with someone uh sushma could you please confirm if you have any doubt till now no doubts neeraj i am good 